All right, everyone, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. The weekend's over. What a great weekend. Warm weather. It was awesome. I enjoyed this weekend immensely. If anyone saw me on the stream, what I looked like, yeah, you could tell I had a good time. Oh, my God. The stream was fun. I had a lot. I had a, lot of, I had a blast with that. We're going to do that every Sunday at noon till the season starts. I love it because a lot of times we don't even talk football. We were talking motorcycles at one point. And I love the one comment I got when the guy was like, uh, you know what Tim looks like? Tim looks like the kind of guy if you sat on his bike, he would punch you in the face. Well, I'm going to give you guys a, a tip in biker code. You don't touch a biker's woman and you don't sit on his bike. You follow those two rules when you see a club, you should be okay. Let's talk about the New York Giants and what's going on this week in the Galladay, the Galladay contract. Kenny's contract. I just call him Kenny because we're buds. Kenny's contract came out and yes, the contract year one is extremely team friendly. So you have to give the Giants credit for putting up a little amount of money for a big time player. And yes, I'm going to say this slowly for people before you start typing and bashing. Hear me listen to what I say, because no one seems to listen. Signing Kenny makes sense from a football perspective because it improves the team and improves your offense. Plain and simple. But from a logistical contract perspective, after year 2021, we are dropping over $40 million on a guy whose market value dictated in 2020 was probably about 12 and a half. So you cannot sit there and tell me that he is over $9 million better than all the other receivers on the market because I'm not buying it. And the gentleman is also 27 years old. So, you know what? As he gets deeper into his contract, you're getting into, you're starting to hit your 30s, which issues can occur. And he is coming off a hip. So, while I give the Giants all the credit in the world for signing him to a team friendly deal in the year one and giving Daniel Jones a legitimate number one receiver to throw to, and year two and three is not good. Teams, even back in the early 2000s and mid 2000s, good teams, really good teams, what they used to do is they used to push out their cap space. They would offer players low salaries and high bonuses in year one. And then in year two, three, and four, they would put the rest of the money in, in reference to having, they would, um, what is, what's popping up here? I know that. Don't tell me that. Um, what will happen is they would then in turn, turn around and push, like I say, and push that money out into year two, three, and four of the deal. And as they keep signing players, they keep pushing out the money. But the problem is one day the chickens are all going to come home to roost and all that money is going to accumulate at once on your cap. If you look at the fact that in 2022, between Leonard Williams and Kenny, we have over $40 million be tied up into two players. We are extremely cap heavy with five, six guys. And then we need to worry about Peppers coming up for his contract. And I've said it before, if Evan Ingram balls out and turns into an actual all pro and learns how to catch the ball, are we going to just let him walk? Or are we going to be able to sign him? Right now, we only have 37 players in, under contract for 2022. At one point, we had over $80 million. But after these deals and these signings, our contract value is below 20. And I've said this before. The cap is a living, breathing entity. I have said that a million times. It can be, it can be massaged. It can be, it can be pushed. It can be pulled. The problem is, at one point in time, the cap is going to come back and bite you in the ass. It's the 49ers went through this. It happens. It happens to teams that know how to work the cap. But the problem is the Giants have been bad for so long and been in such cap heck for so many years. We just, you know, it's just one of those things you never think about the fact that they were could be a good team. But I'm going to say this slowly again from a football, before you start typing your comments, from a football perspective, this is a good deal for the Giants. They get a number one wide receiver with a low cap number in year one, but then in year two and three, that number severely expands. Now, fall, and I love how they put it following the 2023 season, 
Well, that means you're paying him in 2021, 2022. The Giants have the option to release him and incur, basically only incur like $6.8 million in dead cap money. And then we avoid paying him 21. That's fine. But if he breaks down in 2021 and 2022, you're still on the, you're still on the hook for that money. There's nothing bad that I just said. It's not derogatory. It's just I'm not scared. Yeah, the Giants got cut here. Yeah, we got a Super Bowl. Yeah. We have other problems. We have other issues that need to be addressed. So I'm not going to sit there and, and you know, because maybe it's because I'm older. I'm wiser. I'm more mature. I'm going to sit there as a fan and as a rational Giants fan since 1976. I'm going to sit there and look at this from all sides and all angles. And that's the way you need to do it. Now, somebody asked me on the stream, what do I think the Giants grade is for this draft class? And I told him, I said, I'm not going to give out grades. I don't, I don't give out grades because I think a grade at this point, I think a grade in March is an arbitrary number or letter. I really do. Because you don't know what's going to happen in June, and, June, July, and August. Players that you think are going to fill a position may get in the training camp and tank and suck. Players that you never thought were going to achieve anything may surprise you. So from take is from looking at this I mean this free agency class and going, "Wow, well, yeah, I'd give this grade an A plus." No, I'm not going to do that. Cuz it doesn't make sense. Ask me at the end of camp or in week 3, how do I grade the free agent class? Because then you will have a better perspective. I can give you a letter by what it looks like on paper going via the 2020 stats of these players, but it's not what you're going to get in 2021. So I'm, I'm not going to give out a grade. It's the same reason I do not grade draft classes until the year of, uh, excuse me, till the end of year three. Because I've said it a million times, year one, your, your players come into the league and there's, there, it, everything's a surprise. Everything's different. Year two, the league adjusts, gets film on you and knows what you're doing. Year three, you need to readjust to the league adjusting to you. If you take a look at Gettleman's first draft class, when we, when we finished the draft, you probably would say that was an A. A plus. Now you look at it, you might say it's a C minus. It's the same thing with the, you know, the Daniel Jones class. If you liked the draft class, you may be like, it's, it's a B plus. Yeah, it, it may not look like a B plus right now, but again, you can't judge that. Cause now we're going into year three. If those second year players evolve, you know, and it could be an A it could be a B you don't know, but you need to wait. You need to breathe. You need to enhance your chi. You need to understand that the universe as one offers peace and wellness. <laughs> yeah. You know what I always say to that? I always say, you know what? I love when people's like, Tim, you got to calm down. I say, I said, this basically sums up what I am. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. And I don't chew bubble gum because my two front teeth are fake. <laughs> So that's what happens when you get hit in the mouth. But you know what? You just have to just, just, just don't worry about it, guys. You don't need a grade. If you want me to give you a grade on this, on this, uh, if you want me to, if you want to pin me down and give me a, a grade on this class, I'm going to say it's an incomplete. Cause you don't know what's happening with Jackson, the corner. Are they going to be able to have him take less money? He's also coming. He's another player also coming off an injury. What he missed, he missed all but five games last year. He was mentored by Logan Ryan. So that's good. He's also going to go visit the Eagles. I mean, you know, peppers is the one evidently has been bringing these guys in and convincing them. Cause he's evidently one of the guys that helped convince Jackson. So I would, I would give peppers a uh, finder's fee. <laughs> I would give, I'd give him a little, I'd give him a little extra in the envelope, especially if he can convince these guys to come to New York. I'd give him a little extra. Give him a little cash because he's going to need it. Because Lord knows what's going to happen at the end of his fifth year option. 
I hope Peppers plays well. I really do. I like Peppers a lot. I think he was a quality pickup. I've liked him since Michigan. I don't want to see him returning punts, though. I, I, I Jason Seahorn always comes to mind when I see him return a punt. <laughs> bad, bad Jason Seahorn memories always come to mind when I see him return a punt. So I, I don't want I don't want to see that anymore. John Ross, I don't think is going to be returning punts because John Ross looks like he'll get hurt walking up some stairs. <laughs> I love people. I love people that are so enthused about that signing. The guy's been hurt like every year. He hurt himself at the combine. There's just some guys that look, have the talent and look the part, but for some reason, their bodies just do not have the ability to sustain through a 16 week season. I mean, that's, that's not his fault. That's just his genetic makeup. You know, that's just, that's just the way it is. But again, I'm not going to sit there. Like I said, if you look at the free agent class, I'm not going to sit there and rely on John Ross. Because he's the only guy that I know that wanted to demanded a trade and then followed up and got hurt. So let's just hope he can stay on the field for 16 weeks. How many, how long did we have to wait for Evan Ingram to play almost a 15 game season again, play 15 games in a season again? You just don't know, you know, guys break down, man. I mean, it's, it's, and I don't blame the player and I, and I don't make fun of the player because of the fact that they have an injury or they're, are they injury. John Ross is what they refer to as injury prone. But I, you know, but that's just the way, that's just the way your genetic makeup is. I mean, I got hurt when I played, I got hurt all the time. Literally. I got hurt all the time. I played through it. Cause back in my day, you played through no matter what, unless there was a bone protruding through your arm or your leg, you still went on, you still went out and played, but it, it's, you know, but it's, it's not like that now. And honestly, the way athletes are. You know, their bodies are so tuned and so fine and so and in some ways just so com- the mass is just so compact that, you know, you're more susceptible to those injuries. So, you know, I mean, like I said, it's 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 an inter- it's an interesting sign. One day we'll do a one day we'll do a video of a science of a football player. Whoops. I keep hitting that mic. I shouldn't be doing that. But I like playing with this little there's a little what is this? spring. I think it's annoying. I think it's not annoying. It's kind of funny. Um but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna you know we got a new podcast coming out. It's New York Giants across the pond and back. It's gonna be on iTunes, Google, and all that Play Store. Uh, we'll we're gonna we're gonna do a uh, lot of, add a little preview video to it because I think it's kind of interesting. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a weekly show. I'm actually talking football with some uh, with a gentleman from the UK. It's it's interesting. I'm like David Hasselhoff, who was who was immensely popular in Germany for some unknown reason. I'm popular in the UK. I'm told it's because of my brutal honesty and the fact that I don't back down from my opinion. But again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you can like, you can subscribe, you can ring that bell, you know what that means? That'd be awesome.